أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون all praise, all thanks, all gratitude is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, our uh, nourisher, our sustainer, our cherisher, um, and all, uh, and we send our peace and salutations and our blessings on the beloved final prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the seal of the prophet, um, the com who completes the final message of Islam. Um, I want to speak to you all today briefly on um, the ingredients to a community, of creating a community of real connection and real companionship, and um, some of the um, ingredients for this can be found both in narrations, but particularly in the surah, surah al-hujurat. Um, Surah Al-Hujurat is just uh, a beautiful surah that really highlights it um, for us. And I'm going to recite to you some of the verses from that as well as um, some hadith that will bring this into clear light. Um, so let me start with... Um, The ayah, ayah number six um, from chapter 49, which is Surah Al-Hujarat, as I was saying. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, in ja'akum fasiqum bi naba'im fatabayyanu, an tusibu qawmam bi jahala, fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. This translates as, O you who believe, if an evildoer or a troublemaker brings you some news, verify it or clarify it or affirm it, you know, trace its root back so you're sure that what's being related is true and reliable, so that you do not harm people unknowingly. So you do not harm people unlo unknowingly, becoming regretful for what you've done. Um, let me now turn to a hadith. Uh, a couple of uh, narrations, actually, um, that I want to connect to the, the ayah that I just recited to you. So it's been related um, by Sahil ibn Sa'd from the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, Man yadman li ma bayna lahyayhi wa ma bayna rijlayhi adman lahul jannah. So the one or whoever can guarantee what is between his two jawbones or their two jawbones, whether male or female, or what is between their two legs and what is between their two legs. And of course, this is referring to guarantee in terms of chastity and only using those things for good actions. I guarantee Jannah for them. So whoever guarantees the chastity of what is between their two jawbones and what is between their two legs, I guarantee paradise for them. So this narration is obviously lifting up for us the importance of what we say, what we say. And I want to kind of center that first part of this narration. What is the between the two jawbones? Because what we say and what we speak into this world, into the community, that communities that we're a part of, it has a really heavy weight. Um, and it carries a weight that goes way beyond us, right? Um, another narration. Uh, that I think is quite striking that, you know, it, we uh, may not hear as often, and I want to kind of lift it up for that reason. It's in Sahih Muslim. عن أبي هريرة قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كفى بالمرء كذبا أن يحدث بكل ما سمع. And this uh, translates as the Prophet or the Messenger of God saying that um, it is enough for a person to speak uh, or relay everything that that person hears, 
it is enough of that person to do that act for it to be considered a lie. Okay, so it is enough falsehood for someone to speak of everything they hear. Um, and I just found this narration just so striking in terms of like, there are so many times in our lives where we hear of something um, and we end up repeating that thing without sort of any filter or any kind of holding back or any kind of reflection before we actually speak and put that out into the world. It could be a story about a friend or even an unrelated person that we bring into like other conversations in the day and we just end up repeating you know, a particular story that we may have heard of that we don't have any connection to per se, that we weren't, it, it's not necessarily um, significant for us per se, and we don't realize the weight of it, you know, and the fact that the prophet in the other narration is guaranteeing paradise for these two things is also given an indication to us of the weight of our speech um, and the merit of our speech. In other words, what we say can actually be a facilitation for us to reach paradise, right? So it works in both ways. There's a great, great power to speech. Um, now I want to return to the original ayah that I um, recited to you all. And just as a refresher, oh, you who believe, if someone that's a troublemaker brings to you any news, verify it, clarify it, affirm it. So you do not harm people unknowingly. That's something I want to center on unknowingly. So you don't harm a people or a community, qawman bijahala, out of ignorance or lack of knowledge, becoming regretful of what you did later, right? Like, oh man, I really, I really wish I didn't just, I really wish I just double checked, you know, my sources. I really wish I just kind of held back for a second just to kind of check on things. You know, I kind of saw that one coming, you know, I think these are very important kinds of um, self thoughts to develop in us as it relates to our speech. And it's no easy task. It's no easy task. But the beautiful thing here that I think, you know, beyond the sort of general spiel that we may hear about, like control the tongue, you know, going a layer beyond that, what you notice in this ayah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually cares about what harm our speech causes unknowingly unknowingly so even things that happen that we do not intend Allah is giving us a responsibility to clarify and be sure that's the standard and the ethic to which we are called it's not this very basic kind of thing we're actually called to a higher ideal and that's that we look at what we say and speak into this world with the way that wow, that's powerful what I'm doing right now. This is, this is a power that God has given me, the hearing, the seeing, the sight for those of us that are blessed to have these. And that carries a responsibility and a weight that can enter me into paradise or enter me into a state of per perdition and, and, and punishment. So we have to take it seriously. We have to take it seriously. And the ethic that Allah is calling us to is really um, unintentional harm that we should have. Now, I want to backstep here and make sure that I'm not giving the message that, okay, so, you know, things that I'm, you know, I didn't even intend, like, if you are a person that tends to worry a lot about what you're saying, this message may not apply to you, right? If you're always second guessing yourself, doubting yourself, um, you know, this message may not be the one that's meant for you, right? But this is certainly meant for those of us who end up um, speaking something unthinkingly and regretting it later. And we do this as a pattern. Um, and it's not something that really causes us much food for thought. We don't stop at it. Then that message is definitely for, for that individual, right? But for some of us, you know, um, who may struggle um, with self-doubt, um, you don't want to get further um, sort of stuck in those thought patterns of always second guessing yourself either. So that's just a little disclaimer there so that my message is received um, accordingly. Um, but you know, this is the beauty of the Quran and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to like, why are we, you know, there's a verse in the Quran that why are we, you know, you know, the, the, the messenger is a witness over you as a community. And then you as a community are witnesses 
over mankind. For that formula to really work out, you know, our community has to really transform itself and wrestle and struggle with itself because the light of, you know, this faith that we've been gifted with only becomes manifest when we are allowed, allow it to transform us to such an extent that indeed, you know, we see the manifestation of this, this verse, you know, and the manifestation of it certainly came in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and certainly has come, you know, through our tradition in different ways at different times. But we have to really take that call to these highest ethics seriously. And really that's, these things are really what fundamentally, um, you know, uh, give us both a responsibility towards the rest of humanity, but also a sense of pride that we can take in that really our religion is special. There's something special to this, and it can be extremely, extremely difficult to actually emotionally appreciate that in the age of Islamophobia, in the age of just constant, you know, being a minority in a country where, where um, you know, you, you're, you're a small segment of the society, you're struggling to get your voice heard, you're, you know, you're not hearing a lot of the affirmation and then that sense of this religion is really the true religion starts to feel like superficial talk. You know, it's just like, well, I guess, you know, this is the best religion, but I don't really see it, you know. But what's beautiful is if you study um, this religion in depth, you do start to see that high ethical bar that it's calling us to um, as Muslims. And, and then things start to fit in, but it has to be manifested. You know, it has to be transformative for, for these kinds of ayats to really hit us. Um, let me also share with you another verse from Surah Al-Hujurat that, that continues to build on this theme of what are some of these elements that really add to a beautiful community? So we, we, we're talking about restraining our tongue. We're talking about verifying information. We're talking about not spreading things as soon as we hear them, you know, but being mindful. Um, and now we're shifting to some other qualities. Allah SWT says also in the same surah, surah ayah 11, Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum wa la nisa'un min nisa'in asa an yakunna khayran minhunna wala talmizu anfusakum wala ta wala tanabazu bil alqab bi'sa al ism al fusuq ba'da al iman wa man lam yatub fa ulaika hum az zalimun Allah is saying O oh believers O oh you who believe who have faith do not let some men amongst you ridicule mock other men for perhaps the ones that are being ridiculed are better than the ones doing the ridiculing. Nor let some women amongst you ridicule other women or mock other women. Perhaps they, the ones being ridiculed, may be better than the ones doing the ridiculing. So this is an internal dialogue now, talking to the internal intra-Muslim community, right? Yeah, you have the amen, O you who believe. Um, do not defame or put each other down or find ways to look at the work or the things that someone is doing, speaking ill of them, putting them down, marring their reputation, right? And then it goes on to say, nor call each other by offensive nicknames, you know, al-qab, right? So we can have these kind of like jeering kind of nicknames for our friends that like poke jabs at them and such, Um or like of certain groups. Um, and when we're kind of within our subgroup, we feel more comfortable using those kinds of nicknames. These are the kinds of qualities that Allah wants us to flip on their head if we're to produce the community that's truly beautiful. Um, and the the ayah sort of ends uh, with how evil is, is it? Like how, how terrible is it to actually turn to these things after having faith in your heart? You know, after claiming to be paid people of faith, you know, this is not befitting, you know, badal iman, after having faith. Um, and then it says, And those that do not turn back, for they are those who are the oppressors or wrongdoers, right? 
And really as a community, as the Muslim community, we are only harming ourselves. We're only doing zulm to ourselves. We are only doing injustice to ourselves uh, when we're not more careful uh, in this way, especially in regards to each other. And what's beautiful is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not necessarily favor us as a chosen people per se, because he's saying here, that look, and the person that doesn't turn back, Allah is calling that person out, that that's wrong. Just because you have the Muslim card doesn't mean, mean that you're not, you know, you're somehow absolved uh, of wrongdoing and being like someone that does oppression, um, uh, whether it's to oneself or to your community. Um, but I feel like these are really gems that we easily fall into and we kind of forget the weight of these things. But I want to highlight as we're closing out, inshallah, on this word in this ayah that says asa right Asa, which means perhaps or maybe like perhaps the people that were ridiculing the others the ones that were being ridiculed excuse me are better are nobler in the sight of god than the ones doing the ridiculing i think this is such a gem especially particularly uh you know in the kind of culture that we're in where there's a lot of um you know social media bashing and name calling and coming to quick judgments based off you know small memes and statements there's such a impulsiveness to all this behavior whereas Allah is saying perhaps you know which is giving us a pause like consider for a second really deeply reflect that what if at the objective level, this other human being is better than you. And if you can fully appreciate that in your heart, then you may you might find yourself perhaps reconsidering the way you speak about that person or how you engage that person, even if you disagree, or how quickly you respond to their message, or how much efforts do you make in actually trying to contact that person, have a one-on-one, -on -one, have a personal discussion with that person, putting all the pieces together of that human being's life before making judgment or making a call on social media and such. What is this calling us? This one word, asa, is calling us to cultivate a sense of humility in our knowledge as human beings. And fundamentally, it's saying that your knowledge, oh human beings, is limited. And we have to put that in perspective by putting our knowledge in relation to the knowledge of God. And once we can appreciate that with our heart of hearts, um, it'll open up a sense of humility in our knowledge because compared to his, we're utterly limited, right? And so what I claim to know about a person or about a situation or a circumstance that I encounter or a story that I hear, fundamentally, let's remember this verse and highlight that word, asa, what if, what if, and really deeply sit with that before engaging. And there's a beautiful poem, uh, I found it online, I wish I could know more about the author, they're named um, A. Siddiqui. Um, it's not exactly a poem, but I want to share this in the last two minutes, because I think it'll really bring this point home. Um, it is an analogy, or a kind of uh, parable for us all to draw from, it's very beautiful. Next time you see a large tree, imagine what must have been happening in the world when it was just a small sapling. Allah knows what seed that tree grew from and from where that seed originated. Okay. Allah is aware of every season that tree has endured. Allah knows exactly how many leaves it has grown and shed during its entire existence. Allah knows how many animals have sought refuge and habitat within its shade over the years. He knows exactly how many caterpillars have chewed from its leaves and the precise amount that has been eaten by all creatures. He knows the quantity of rainfall that has watered this tree and exactly where that water came from. He knows how deep its roots go and what nutrients they're extracting from the dirt. 
he knows precisely how many creatures have benefited from its shade. He knows how much oxygen it has given off and who and or what has inhaled that oxygen. He knows how it bows in worship to him in its own unique way that we cannot understand. He knows which of its limbs have been removed and what became of those limbs. Perhaps, I'm pulling out of this parable now. Perhaps if we can begin to look at trees this way, it can train us to look at other Muslims this way as well. It can train us to look at other Muslims this way as well. It may allow us to approach our relationships with more humility if we can accept that our knowledge about a tree is so superficial and so limited then how much more limited is our knowledge about the history the stories the traumas um, and everything that informs another human being's life and perspective and how they come even to a particular point of view you know going back to our discussion on social media culture and dynamics how much little can we possibly know given the complexity of human beings about the human being and about the value of that human being that perhaps they may be um in fact better than us before we you know lift our tongue to speak about the other human being so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from a sense of arrogance and protect us from assuming the worst about our brothers and sisters, um, but rather to build the foundation of a beautiful community on speaking good, on keeping um, our attention on things that concern us, on um, may, he, may, he, may he give us tawfiq to refrain from um, sharing information when we first hear it, May he give us the power to discern, you know, um, when to share and what to share and how to share uh, and to double check our intentions and to appreciate the limitedness of our knowledge in all of this and to always maintain a good opinion of other people, you know, by reinforcing those thoughts that try to create excuses for the other human being in front of us or the other Muslim um, in front of us. I say these things and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all of us and whatever I have said of good is certainly, certainly, certainly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever I've said of shortcoming and evils from me and I ask Allah's forgiveness for, uh, for it. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Thank you so much for having me uh, here at Muslim Space.